Hey guys, welcome to video 57. Today we're going to take a look at the design and construction of a typical distortion or overdrive type stomp box effect. The circuit we're going to be using is this common emitter z cly pair. We looked at this originally back in video 51, so if you want a refresher on it, uh, go back there. But uh, what we've got here is two germanium transistors, a GE7 NPN and a 2N408 PNP. And when we connect these up as a Zikli uh, compound transistor, we have effectively a beta of about 5,000. Because we're using germanium transistors, the barrier potential is about 0.3 volts or less. Uh, the emission coefficient is approximately 1.5 and the thermal equivalent voltage is also about 26 millivolts as usual. Now, if we go through the analysis of this amplifier, the numbers we come up with are approximately uh, ICQ of 2 milliamps, VCEQ of 4 volts, our emitter dynamic resistance is about 20 ohms. The effective AC collector resistance, that's R4 in parallel with R6, is about 1.7 K ohms. We've got an AC external emitter resistance of 0 ohms because we fully bypassed the emitter. The input resistance looking into the amplifier through C1 is about 57 K ohms. So a uh, source that's driving it through the input jack is going to see R1 in parallel with that so that'll overall be about 35k ohms input resistance which is pretty decent. Uh, the voltage gain of the amplifier theoretically is negative 85. In practice it probably could be anywhere from around 70 to over 100 which is in any case uh, pretty good for our application and our clipping points are 3.4 volts positive and 4 volts on negative peaks. Now the circuit itself is pretty straightforward on the input I'm using a stereo jack to control power it switches the negative side of the battery in and out of the circuit so when we don't have a jack inserted the circuit is not powered up. Uh, we're using an LED as a power indicator and I've got a pot on the input to control the level that is driving the z cly pair. That basically controls the amount of distortion we get from this amplifier. And the pot on the output controls the drive level to the next effect in the chain or the amplifier if that's what it's connected to. Now, I'd like to point out again that this design is using germanium transistors, the GE7 and the 2N408, and you could substitute in just about any NPN and PNP germanium devices you can find, and it'll work just fine. But if you don't want to use the old school germanium devices, we can still use silicon transistors with just a very slight modification to the circuit. So let's take a look at that next. In this version, I've used a 2N3904 and a 2N3906. You can substitute whatever your favorite NPN and PNP silicon transistors are, and it'll be just fine. The only thing I changed was I increased the value of R3 to 180K ohms to uh, compensate for the increased barrier potential, the base emitter junction of the silicon transistors. If we go through the analysis here, uh, we get an ICQ of about 1.6 milliamps, a little bit less than the 2 milliamps of the previous version. And that gives us just a little bit lower voltage gain, but it's still high enough to do the job. So if you'd prefer to use silicon devices, this is a uh, good option for you. Now, one thing you'd probably want to add to the circuit is a stomp switch to either bypass the effect or not and let's take a look at that next. So over here we've got the next version of the circuit. I'm using the germanium transistors but you could use the silicon version if you wanted and I've added in the three pole double throw stomp switch It's shown here and this is the pin designations I'm using for the circuit here. Switch 1, S1, is used to control the power to the circuit. It switches the positive rail versus the uh, input jack, which switches the negative rail. And basically, it turns off the effect when we're in the bypass mode so that we're not draining the battery down. And we can see that S2 
when it's in the A position, S3 is in the A position. We're going through the effect when we stomp on the switch. Uh, S1 goes to position C, S2, and S3 also go to position C. We turn off the effect and we bypass it. So this is what's called true bypassing. All right, now let's talk about battery life here for a second. Whenever we're using the effect, we're drawing about two milliamps to bias up our amplifier, and the LED is probably going to draw maybe six to eight milliamps or so. So on average, we're drawing maybe 10 milliamps from the battery. A typical nine volt alkaline battery has a capacity of about 500 milliamp hours. So if we're drawing roughly 10 milliamps from the battery, we should get about a 50 hour life from the typical alkaline battery. And that's pretty good. But we still might want to add an external power jack so that we could run this from an external power supply. So let's take a look at that modification next. Okay, so what I've done here was added a 2.1 millimeter power jack. These are very common. Uh, this is the front view and this is the back and I've identified the terminals to correspond with my switch shown here in the uh, blue dashed box. Now the way the switch works is when we don't have an external power supply connected, uh, terminals 3 and 2 are shorted together, so the positive terminal of the battery is connected to our positive supply rail. Whenever we insert the power jack, it opens the contacts between pins 2 and 3, disconnecting the battery from the circuit, and then we're running from our external power supply. Uh, the stomp switch and the input jack still control the power as well, but we've disconnected the 9 volt battery so that we don't have the power supply connected in parallel with it because that can cause bad things to happen with the battery. And uh, there you go. So this is another good modification that you'd probably want to uh, add to the circuit, and it really doesn't increase the complexity that much. Uh, one thing I want to mention here is that I did use the standard polarity conventions for this power jack. That is, the inner conductor here is the negative terminal, and this outer contact is the positive terminal of the power supply. That's pretty much standard for all stomp box type power supplies. All right, now the next thing I want to talk about is the distortion of this circuit. As it sits right now, it's a pretty decent, smooth sounding distortion. It's not very heavy. I'd say it's good for, say, maybe blues type applications, but if you're into some heavy distortion for metal or grunge, this is not really going to be sufficient. What we need to do in those applications is add some more gain to the circuit, and that's what we're going to take a look at next. So what I've done here is added in a JFET preamplifier for all practical purposes. And I've used a double pole, double throw switch to switch it in or out of the signal path here. Whenever uh, we have S4 and S5 in position A, the input signal goes through the JFET common source amplifier and gets boosted by a factor of maybe three to seven or so. It depends on the JFET. It can vary quite a bit from one device to the other, but in any case, we are going to get a sufficient amount of boost here to really overdrive the Z-Cly pair and produce some pretty heavy distortion. Now, if we don't want that, we want it to be a little smoother, we just flip this uh, boost switch back so that it's connected to position C and we're just going to bypass right around the JFET and uh, let's take a look next at the construction that I used here okay so let me come over and down and this is what I used, uh, just a small stomp box that I had laying around, and I had some old perf board from Radio Shack, so you know this stuff's really old. And uh, when it was all said and done, I squeezed it all into this stomp box, and this is what it looks like. Uh, not my nicest wiring, I have to say, but it does work, and uh, you know, it gets the job done. Now, I did paint this thing to make it look really nice 
as a finished product and here it is and you can see I've used this really cool looking uh, I guess it's a purple LED but in any case the final product looks really nice uh, it's hiding all of my horrible looking wiring inside here and over here we can see I have the effect connected between a guitar and an amplifier no other effects are in the chain here because I just wanted to give you an example of what it sounds like all by itself so I'm going to play a couple of uh, guitar passages uh, and you know we'll get an idea what this thing can do and I have to give my apologies to Eric Clapton and David Gilmore uh, but uh, here we go Sound sample clean. Sound sample with just the Z Clyde pair. Sound sample with JFET Boost. Alright, so there you have it, and just to put uh, the sound samples into context, the first ones I just used the Stratocaster and the Overdrive effect all by itself. The last sample where I was trying to play a lead from Comfortably Numb uh, on the Les Paul, I did include a chorus effect and a little bit of reverb as well so that's why it sounded mm, at least maybe a little bit better but it gives you an idea of what you can do uh, with a simple circuit like this we didn't really need to go to any clipping diodes or anything and I, I will talk about that stuff in a future video but for right now uh, there you go there's an example of a uh, relatively simple effect that you could uh, construct and use and hopefully uh, it will sound good for you and I'll see you guys next time around